a uh, very good morning class 12th as promised i am back with the next one shot video on ketones for the chapter of aldehydes ketones and carboxylic acids i have done this chapter in these slides for aldehydes i did it yesterday for carboxylic acid it has already been uploaded today we begin with one shot video on ketones so let's begin with it okay moving on with ketones the one shot video This is class 12 CBSC the channel is by Seema Makhijani moving on to help you out again so with ketones we'll first do the structure geometry and hybridization when we talk about the structure of a ketone it looks like this in this structure your carbon atom has got 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma and 1 pi since it has 3 sigma bonds the hybridization becomes sp2 the bond angle becomes 120 and the geometry becomes trigonal planar emphasizing on the pi bond as you can see the pi electron cloud above and below this particular bond is more towards oxygen owing to the reason that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon therefore your oxygen gets slight negative charge carbon gets a slight positive charge therefore this oxygen is electron rich we call it that it is the nucleophilic center while carbon is your electrophilic center moving on to the intermolecular force of attraction in case of ketones i have one ketone i have another ketone in ketones carbon of the double bond o is always attached to r groups no hydrogen agar ye hydrogen ho jayega it will become an aldehyde now in this particular compound r gives electrons towards carbon and you have this as your dipole moment similarly here also there would be a dipole moment so there is a definite dipole dipole interaction between ketones but when we talk about a ketone in water then in that case there is definitely a chance of this hydrogen which has got a delta positive charge owing to the polarity of this bond is attracted towards oxygen of the ketone and your ketone may become soluble in water but that is only true if r group is small so we say your lower ketones are water soluble if i talk about higher ketones where r group increases in that case the hydrophobic part increases and the solubility goes on decreasing moving on to the preparation of ketones we begin with the preparation from alcohols when i talk about the alcohols it has to be a secondary alcohol not a primary alcohol and on oxidation with kmno4 the hydrogens are removed you end up in a ch3 c double bond o ch3 PCC is another such reagent which will again give you a ketone like this. Copper 573 has a special property of removing hydrogen. So we also call this reaction as dehydrogenation. Copper at 573 helps in dehydrogenation again leading to the ketone which in this case is acetone as a common name, propanone as the IUPAC name. I'll take another example. I've taken a cyclic compound this time. You have this cyclic compound, and this carbon also has an H. Again, the result is the same. In the presence of PCC or copper 573, the two hydrogens are removed. In the oxidation, that is with KMnO4 as an oxidizing agent, also hydrogens are removed, and you end up in a double bond O, that is cyclohexanone. So the three reagents. can work to convert cyclohexanol an alcohol to cyclohexanone by using any of these three now this is a new method we are using something called as dialkyl cadmium dialkyl cadmium is this dialkyl and cadmium because cadmium has a valency of 2 with acid chloride acid chloride is an r group with a c double bond o and a cl so when these two react you end up in a ketone like this i am taking a specific acid chloride and i am taking a dimethyl 
cadmium. When these two react, we end up in a compound where your two molecules of acid chloride react with this losing cadmium chloride. Cadmium chloride two times from the two molecules. What do you end up in? You have a CH3CO two times and you have a methyl from here. So you again end up in an acetone. That is the reaction. Byproduct is cadmium chloride. Now this byproduct is important. The reason is how do I obtain dialkyl cadmium? Where do I get the dialkyl cadmium from? Is a question. To obtain the dialkyl cadmium, we use Grignard reagent. Specifically, I am using CH3MgBr and you treat it with cadmium chloride. It is this cadmium chloride which can be reused. Two molecules of Grignard reagent treated with cadmium chloride used can be used from here, leading to your dimethyl cadmium, which is your requirement in this reaction. And that is how you prepare your dialkyl cadmium. The byproduct is magnesium with a Br and a Cl. Two molecules of this compound. So, dialkyl cadmium reacts with acid chloride, gives you your ketone. And you can prepare the dialkyl cadmium by using a Grignard reagent with cadmium chloride, which is also a byproduct here. The next is with from alkane nitrile. Now, what is alkane nitrile? It is alkyl cyanide. This alkane nitride is treated with a Grignard reagent. I am using methyl magnesium bromide. Now you very well know speciality of Grignard is this. Your magnesium being a metal has a positive charge and R therefore gets a negative charge. In the cyanide, this is a pi bond. Nitrogen is more electronegative. So the electron shift towards nitrogen. Carbon gets a positive charge. Nitrogen gets a negative charge. Therefore, this methyl group goes and attacks the carbon. You end up in R. C, two bonds are left. Nitrogen here. This gets a methyl group and you get an MgBr here which is an intermediate in this reaction. This further on hydrolysis breaks the pi bond giving you O here and the two hydrogens here. So you end up in R, COCH3. Your ketone is ready. The byproduct is N gets the H2, Mg, Br. That's the byproduct. Our interest is in the ketone. You started with alkane nitrile and you end up in a ketone. The other branch of the ketone will depend on your Grignard reagent. Fine. Comparing the reactivity of aldehydes to ketones. Now there's a detailed video on this particular topic where I have compared the reactivity of ketones and aldehydes and carboxylic acid for nucleophilic addition reactions. But I'll still do it again. Now why addition is due to the presence of the pi bond. This is your pi bond is the cause of addition reactions. What is a nucleophile? Anything which is nucleus loving. Nucleus loving means nucleus is positively charged. So your nucleophile has to have a negative charge. And this is how we represent the nucleophile. Now, pi bond being weak, oxygen being more electronegative moves like this. Your carbon gets a positive charge. In both the cases, your nucleophile has to approach the positively charged carbon. But it is easily approachable for this carbon, not as easily here. And the reason is due to the presence of two R groups. First reason is due to steric hindrance from two R groups. The second reason is these two R groups also have a plus I effect. Since they have a plus I effect, they give electrons. If they give electrons, this positive charge gets reduced. So your nucleophile cannot easily attack. So the second reason is the plus I effect of the two R groups reduces positive charge on carbonyl carbon. That is why your nucleophile is unable to attack. Whereas in case of an aldehyde, one, there is just one R group. So there is much less steric hindrance plus only one plus I effect. So automatically, reactivity wise, aldehyde is more reactive 
than ketones for nucleophilic addition reaction. Now this question at times is asked uh, which will react faster with HCN or which will react faster with hydrazine doesn't matter to you. Your interest is that aldehyde will always be more reactive than keto. Moving to the physical property for the boiling point comparison. This is the dipole moment of an aldehyde. This is the dipole moment of a ketone because oxygen is more electrolyte. R groups are electron providers. Why so? Because R group have a hybridization of sp3. Your carbon has a hybridization of sp2 because of the pi bond. Out of these two, which has more S character? This. So this becomes more electronegative. So the electron shift is from the R to the carbonyl carbon. Therefore, so as we can see, the dipole moment for aldehydes would be lower, while for ketones the dipole moment would be higher. Therefore, the boiling point of ketones will be more than that of aldehydes. Boiling points are related to intermolecular force of attraction, which for ketones and aldehydes is dipole-dipole. As explained, aldehydes have a lower dipole than ketones. So ketones have a higher boiling point as compared to aldehydes. Moving on to nucleophilic addition reactions, I am doing a few of them and there is a special video already made on the channel which you can watch if you want. Talking about this, this would always go here, your carbon would get positive and this is your nucleophile which will attack to the carbon. So you result in carbon, O gets the H, C gets the Cn, that's one. Moving to the second, this is the positive part, this is the negative part. So this part will go to carbon again, leading to RNR, C, your O gets an Na and C gets an SO3H. Of course, there is further reaction in this where there is a proton shift from the acid to the base, leading to no change in R. Here you get the H, here you get the Na and this is a white colored solid which works as a test. Of course, in case of ketones, owing to the two R groups, this shift is not easy. It's easier for aldehydes. Talking about the next reaction, which is for alcohols. In the alcohol, this is your negative part, this is your positive part. So your ethyl group, positive part, will go here, leading to R, R, C gets the OH and you have an OC2H5. This is called as a hemiacetal. A single carbon with ether and alcohol is said to be a hemiacetal. The reaction can further continue with another molecule of alcohol and it will lead to the formation of acetal like this where the second molecule of alcohol reacts. So when you have two ethers on the same carbon, it is called as an acetal. Moving to the next, this reagent is called hydrazine. And there is a loss of water which leads to your product. This hydrogen goes double bond NNH2. This is called as a hydrazone is formed. This reaction again is a detailed video on ammonia derivatives by Seema Makijani. You can reach it. Similarly, this reaction is again an important reaction. I am rewriting this for better understanding. In such a reaction, your water is lost like this which means you end up in the two R groups, double bond N, NH and this is your bulkier group with two nitros. Now this group is called as your 2,4 dinitro, it is called 2,4 DNP test. Now this DNP test is with this particular group and you end up in an orange PPT by the loss of water. The same is here also. If you have a ketone like this, we again see a loss of water like this. Moving to the last, if you have, this is your ketone, it loses water like this, you end up in RRC double bond NOH and this product is called as an oxyme of whatever you started with. If your starting material was acetone, the name will be acetone oxide. Please watch the video on ammonia derivatives 
where you will have a lots of such compounds to be done in detail moving on to reduction of ketones by using a reducing agent like sodium borohydride it will cause only the pi bond to break like this and your sodium borohydride provides hydrogen on both the sides which means you end up in ch3 ch ch3 oh that is propane to all you end up in a 2 degree alcohol by using a reducing agent which breaks only the pi bond now there are special reductions exactly like aldehydes special reductions are two in your syllabus clemenson's and wolfkischner for the clemenson's reduction we use amalgamated zinc and concentrated hcl when you use this the total pi bond breaks the total pi bond breaks ch3 ch3 intact and the carbon gets two hydrogens which means you end up in a hydrocarbon that is why it is said to be a special reduction where oxygen is lost similarly we do it the second such reaction is where you reacted with hydrazine i just explained when you treated with hydrazine it loses water when water is lost you end up in this remains as it is carbon double bond n single bond nh2 i'll just give you the name this is your acetone this is also called as acetone followed by hydrazone so you first get this after this you treated with glycol which is a high boiling liquid koh and heat this leads nitrogen gas to be lost and your hydrogen molecule comes to the carbon which means you end up in ch3 as it is ch3 as it is carbon gets h2 and there is a loss of nitrogen so again you end up in a hydrocarbon like in the above reaction the second reaction is called wolf kishner reduction first is called clemenson's reduction both of them are special reductions where the double bond is broken down and you end up in a hydrocarbon like this your product is nothing but propane clear the next we have a chemical test for ketones which have a methyl group attached to it what do i mean by this you have to have a methyl and a ketone after that it could be a long chain of carbon which means it can be one carbon chain it can be two carbon chain any number but it has to have a methyl ketone the name of the test is by iodo form test what do you need to add you need to add naoh and i2 and what happens your bond breaks here this ch3 gets converted into chi3 which is a yellow solid and which is what you see rest of it gets oxidized like this a ch3 ch2 and coona because you have a highly basic medium actually these two react to give you something called as sodium hypoiodite which is the oxidizing agent and causes the oxidation of the second half of the reactant molecule but our interest is in this which is a yellow ppt the name of the test is iodoform test so any compound if it has a ketone at the second position it will give you iodoform test any compound if as long but it has a ketone at the second position which means this is methyl it will give you the iodo form test just add naoh and i2 and heat it of course it will lead to a yellow colored solid of iodo form which can be seen moving on to chemical test which are common to both aldehyde and ketone ka matlab ye wale test aldehyde bhi dega aur ketones bhi dega aur there are the tests that we have under this category are three in number which we will be doing now the first is if you add sodium bisulfite to an aldehyde or a ketone it will give you a white solid of course in such a reaction aldehydes give a faster white solid than ketones that's the only difference but both of them will give a white solid if you treat them with sodium bisulfite the formula for sodium bisulfite is this the second is if you add 2,4 dnp to both of them you will end up in an orange solid formation and that shows it can be either aldehyde or ketone 
So if you get an orange solid with 2,4 DNP shows that it is an aldehyde or a ketone or it confirms presence of carbonyl group. Moving to the third, it is called as the idoform test which I just did which means if you add NaOH plus I2 and you get a yellow solid means that the compound has a methyl with a CO. Now it can be an aldehyde or methyl with a CO it can be a ketone also. Our interest is it has to have a methyl and a CO group. Fine. So these three tests are common both aldehyde and ketones both will give it white with sodium bisulfite, orange with 2,4 DNP, yellow with idoform only if it is a methyl with a CO group. Moving on to the named reaction valid for ketone. This named reaction I am talking about is aldol condensation and you already have a video on it. This reaction is valid both for aldehydes and ketones. What's special? They should have an alpha hydrogen. Let me explain what I mean by this. This is the ketone and I have a CH3. So it has alpha hydrogens and I have a CH3 here. It also has alpha hydrogens here. But supposing I have a compound like this and I have a compound like this on this side. Now, is alpha hydrogen? This is the alpha carbon, but there is no hydrogen. Because it is bonded to a carbon, there is no hydrogen on this carbon and there is no hydrogen on this carbon also. So, this will not give you your aldol condensation. For the rest, please watch the video. It has a detailed video on aldol condensation. You only need to type aldol condensation by Seema Makijani and you will reach. Any topic you are stuck, please write the name of the topic followed by Seema Makijani. You will reach there. So, this I am not doing in detail. I only needed to explain that what are such hydrocarbons. Aldehyde also of the type this will not show aldol condensation because the alpha carbon has no hydrogen in it. If I take formaldehyde, this also will not give you this because there is no alpha carbon. Forget hydrogens. Moving further, there is something called as acetophenone which you should know. Acetophenone means two carbons, phen means a benzene and one means a ketone which means the compound actually is this. We did this in detail in class 11th. Preparation is from benzene. If onto benzene I want this attached, we reacted with acid chloride in the presence of anhydrous AlCl3 and you end up in acetophenone. The reaction is called Friedel-Crafts acylation. Also, in case you do not have this, then what is the next best choice? You can use acetic anhydride also. In the first case, the byproduct formed is your HCl. But if you use acetic anhydride, then the byproduct would be acetic acid. But Acetophenone is common whether you use acid chloride or you use acetic anhydride. So if you want to prepare an aromatic aliphatic ketone, aromatic aliphatic ketone, we use Friedel-Crafts reaction to prepare this. Moving on to the resonating structures of acetophenone. This is your acetophenone. As you can see, the carbon has got no lone pairs. So this will act as electron withdrawing group. It will have a minus, it will be pulling minus R effect. That means this electron is pulled by oxygen and carbon pulls this electron here. That means you end up in carbon O gets a negative, a CH3, a double bond here. Nothing changes, nothing changes and a positive. Is the first resonating structure. For the second, this carbon requires electrons so this pi bond shifts here leading to no change here, no change here, no change here. The electron goes here and this gets a positive charge. Now this requires electron, it pulls the pi electron towards itself leading to no change here. I'm sorry, I missed the double bond in this structure. This stays as it is. 
no change here double bond comes here this stays as it is and this gets a positive charge last structure now the last structure this electron is leading electron this particular carbon so pi electron is pulled back this is pulled back here which means your last structure would have your last structure would have no change here carbon gets a double bond o this bond is one left and you end up in this structure please focus on the first and the last they both have no charge in them and their rotating bonds have shifted by one position these three have charge where are the charges this is the ortho position this is the para position this is the ortho position so ortho and para are electron deficient because they have a positive charge which means if at all there is an electrophile to attack then your electrophile cannot go to ortho position or para position it would go to the meta position like this clear i just show you an example for this so if you do a nitration of acetophenone this is called as a nitrating mixture it releases nitronium ion you end up in acetophenone as it is and this nitronium ion attacks the meta position you get meta nitro acetophenone similarly when you do bromination your br positive attacks again at the meta position it cannot go to ortho it cannot go to para it can only go to the meta position so your products are meta nitro acetophenone or meta bromo acetophenone if you are treating it with acetophenone on bromination or nitration with this we come to the end of ketones one shot video it is a 26 roughly 26 minute video in which you can finish your ketones more or less a little bit of it is extra which for which you may have to refer to another videos but otherwise overall for revision this video would be of help to you i hope you have understood do very well in life stay happy stay blessed bye for now